It's Wednesday, the 27th of September, and this is Photo Walkthrough, Tutorial 9, Chapter 5. I'm John Arnold, and today I've got a quick update for anyone entering our competition, I've got some new toys to play with, and I'll mention the new version of Adobe Lightroom Beta. Hello again. Those of you that have been paying attention to my audio quality, probably not many of you, might have noticed some changes over the last few episodes. Chris Marquardt is an expert sound engineer and he's been badgering me for months to improve my recording equipment. And over the last couple of weeks he's even tried to help me mix the sound from my old equipment. Well at last he's managed to get me to spend the money on a new mic and a mixing desk. So starting today I'm using the new gear, and with any luck I should be sounding a lot better. I hope it was worth the money, let me know. I've mentioned the competition we're running at the moment a couple of times, and we've got a good number of entries now, but at least a couple of you have had some difficulty getting your entries to show up. So I wanted to just show you all how to check that your photo has been properly entered. When you visit Flickr, there's this search box in the top right corner of the page. If you type PW Challenge 1 into that search box and press search, you'll see a list of all the entries that have been received so far. If your picture isn't in this list, then your entry hasn't been correctly submitted. If that's the case, then you need to go back to your submission page, the page with your picture on it, and look at the tags on the right hand side here. If you've got the PW Challenge 1 tag, delete it by clicking the X next to it, and then re-add it. Remember to use all lowercase, no capitals at all, no spaces, no underscores, just PW Challenge 1, all lowercase and all strung together. Click Add, and that should add the tag to your picture. If that doesn't work, and there are at least one of you out there that's had some difficulty getting your picture submitted despite having the correct tag added to the picture, then I suggest uploading the picture again to Flickr and adding the tag to the newly uploaded version. I'm sorry about the problem there. It does look like there's a bug in Flickr, and in future I'll make sure that we've got a more robust way of making entries to the competitions. If you're in any doubt about whether your entry has been properly received, then please email me directly, and I'll make sure that you're included in the judging. My email address is photowalkthrough at gmail.com. And remember, the competition closes on October the 6th. That's just over a week away, so if you're planning on entering, you'd better get your skates on. Adobe launched the new version of Lightroom Beta this week. For those of you that don't know what Lightroom is, it's a tool for importing, managing and showcasing large volumes of digital images. It's aimed squarely at people like us who are interested in making our digital and scanned photos look their very best. Beta 4 has just been released and it addresses many performance and usability issues raised by the community of testers, and this is the first version where the Mac and PC versions share the same functionality. I've gone on record with my reservations about previous versions of this product, but I still believe it has huge potential to be something I want to buy and use. I've not tried Beta 4 yet, but I'll definitely be doing so over the next few days, and I'll probably post my thoughts on the blog or in the Flickr forum. If you'd like to try it out, you can download it at labs.adobe.com. Okay, let's get started. This is going to be the final chapter of Michelle's Gun Image. And the final steps are going to be to add the skull images that we've seen in the background, on the sides, and all over this image. And the, the skull image that we use is one that Michelle drew herself, so I'm just going to load that. I'm going to go File, Open, and then in here is Sketch 1. And here's this skull image. I believe uh, Michelle drew this with a pencil and scanned it in, which is some really, really nice work here. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press Control a to select all of it and control C to copy. And you can do all the same things there in the edit menu. And if we go back to this image, I'm going to control V to paste that in. And as you can see it's rather a lot smaller than we need. Now the first um the first of these skulls that I'm going to add is going to go right here on the front of the cannon. It's going to be uh, in this woodwork here, and this is my favourite skull on the whole cannon because it it sort of it sort of just peers out at you without you really being aware that that it's actually a skull. 
Now, uh, the way Michelle's done this is she used a blending mode of colour burn. So if you watch the skull when I change that blending mode to colour burn, you can see it goes very it goes very black, and all of the white is making no no effect on the image. It's just the dark parts of that. And remember, that's because this section of blending modes here, the darkening ones, will uh, basically anything that's less than 100% white or 100% bright will darken the image, and anything that's completely white will have no effect. So with this skull selected here, I'm going to press Control T, or you can do the same thing with Edit Free Transform. And I'm, first of all, I'm just going to drag it out. I'm not going to be too concerned about keeping the aspect ratio the same here, because I, I, from experience, I know that this one needs to be squidged around a little bit. So what I'm aiming for, let me just show you, there's this interesting knot of wood that Michelle mentioned in the interview, which seems to make quite a nice mouth for this. So if I just drag the skull down to there, and perhaps go a tiny bit wider, I'm just trying to get the eyes on the skull at, at, sort of above and just a little bit to the right, so it looks a little bit twisted, and it looks like the mouth there is shouting. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to the way you finish your tree transform is you press enter, or you can press this tick box up here on the, on the uh, bar at the top, and that fixes the transform that you've just done. Now, you can see, um, well, you might not be able to see on the video, but I can see here there's quite a hard edge around the top of where the skull is there. So I'm going to grab the eraser brush, and just with a soft edge brush, I'm just going to soften that edge there so that it blends in nicely and also around here around the the cheeks as it were I want this to be as though it's in the woodwork I don't want it to look overlaid I want it to look like it's really in the woodwork and one other thing if I just alt click on the eye here in the in the layers palette you can see that that skull is a little bit gray um, and because this is a bitmap layer I can do a uh, a levels on it so if I go Image Adjustment Levels, that's going to pop up this Levels dialog here. And as you can see, the reason it's looking a bit grey is because we've got no black tones here at all. So if I just drag that black point up, if you watch the skull as I do this, you'll see that the darker parts of the skull darken up. And what we're essentially doing is increasing contrast here. We're increasing the, um, uh, we're decreasing the number of tones and uh, darkening the darks down, as it were. So this is the black point slider on the le on the levels. So if I press OK on that, and we go back and alt-click on the eyeball again here, we can see that that's darkened that skull down quite a bit now, so that it it's it's a, a stronger effect. I'm just going to back that off just a little bit, because I've darkened it maybe a little too much. Just using the opacity slider on that layer. And let's call that skull 1. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again. I've still got in my cut paste buffer the skull that we worked on a minute ago. So if I press Control V again, we get another skull. And this time, I'm going to go for the large skull that goes across the entire image. So once again, Control T to do our free transform. And this time, I don't want to change the aspect ratio of the skull. By aspect ratio, I mean, if you look, you can make it tall and thin or short and fat. If you hold down the shift key, it pops back to the same height to width ratio as the original. So if I'm holding down the shift key the whole time now, however much I drag, I can't change the aspect ratio. Now you can see that's gone all pixely. It'll sort that out in just a minute. When I press the enter key to finish the free transform, you see that's transformed it up quite nicely. It does quite a good job. Now the next step is I'm going to make this an uh, a hard light blending mode and you can see we've got a lot of white around the edge that's a little bit ugly so once again with my eraser brush I'm going to make my brush size a little bit larger I'm just going to erase around the edge and because this, the recognizable part of this skull this is true of all faces we look at eyes nose and mouth to recognize a face so the edge of the skull doesn't actually need to be visible you know, the, the 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 top of the skull, the sort of the cranium of the skull, doesn't need to be visible in order for our eyes to recognize this as a face. So I can be fairly aggressive about how far in 
I erase in order to keep it recognizable as a skull. It's, it's that shape there, the eyes, the nose, and the big grin on the mouth that make it a face. So now that I've just erased around the edge and completely softened the edges of the thing, all I'm going to do to make that drop into the back, drop back into the image is drag the opacity slider down here in the layers palette, and I want it somewhere about there. It's a fairly subtle skull, and it should just sort of peer out at you, but it shouldn't be the first thing you see. Now, the final skulls layer that we're going to produce is done a little bit differently. Um, if I go to our sketch that we've been working on, we've still got this sketch um, completely selected with our marching ants. If I now go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, what that's going to do is it's going to ask us to give the brush a name. So I'll call it Skull, in a rash of originality. And I can now close that sketch image. I don't need that anymore. And you can see right away, I'm, I've got the eraser selected at the moment, but you can see right away, if I make this brush larger, the shape that we're now seeing on the brush is that skull. And that's because what we've just done in our brushes palette, let me drag that in, on our brush presets, right at the bottom of the brush presets, we've now got this skull brush. Now, what I actually want is, is a brush, not an eraser in that shape. So if I go to my brush tool, and then in the brushes selection, go to the bottom and choose our skull brush there. And I'm going to need a new layer for this. So at the bottom of the layers palette, new layer button. And I'm going to fill this with white. White is our background color. So control delete fills with our background color. Command delete on a Mac. And I'm going to set this to overlay. Now I'm actually going to erase most of this white. So I'm going to set that to overlay, and as you can see, that's that's making everything a lot lighter. Uh, overlay is a contrast increasing blending mode. All of these blending modes here below the overlay are contrast increasing, which means anything above mid-gray will lighten, and anything below mid-gray will darken. And just we filled it with white, so it's lightening. And what I'm going to do is, just with my brush, I'm going to pop a couple of skulls in here in black on that white overlay background. So let's have a big one there, have a smaller one there, another one there, another one there. Right. Now, in order to see where to erase properly, I'm just going to put a grey layer below it. So with the layer that we've just created, I'm going to click on the layer below, click on the new layer button, and that new layer, I'm going to click, a, click the colour selector, and I'm going to choose 50% grey, and then foreground color I want to fill with, so Alter Option Delete fills with the foreground. And that's now giving me a completely gray layer that's below the layer I'm working on. And we can see now exactly what this layer I've just this overlay layer I've just created looks like. And I'm now going to, with my eraser, and I don't want the skull brush on my eraser, so let's just go back and choose my 125 soft edge brush. And I'm just going to erase, nope, I'm erasing on the wrong layer. I need to go back to my skull layer. And I'm just going to erase around these skulls just to cut them out. I don't want this layer to lighten the whole image. I just want these skulls to be there. And, and the reason I filled the layer with white in the first place is that I want the highlights on the skulls to lighten the, 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 the Canon image. And I want the lowlights to darken. So I'm just, just like we did on the large skull, I'm just erasing around the edge and not being too concerned about erasing a bit of this skull because as I say it's the eyes nose and mouth that make it look like a face so we can be a little bit slapdash here just cut out that final skull and now I can go to a much bigger eraser brush I'm using the right hand square bracket key to make my brush larger and just erase the last of that white from our layer. Right, that doesn't look like a very tidy job, but trust me, it's going to be fine. Now, also while I'm here, remember the levels adjustment that we did? I'm going to do the same thing again. Control L brings up the levels because these skulls are a little bit grey. We haven't got any black tones, so I'm just going to drag the black point up a little. Press OK on that, and you can see that's darkened up the dark parts of those skulls. 
Now I can throw away that grey layer that I've been using so that I can see what I'm doing. So just drag that grey layer into the trash can. And then going back and selecting the layer we've just created. These skulls are too, too visible at the moment. But I'm going to distress them down a little bit. So grabbing my brush, no, grabbing my eraser. I'm going to go into my brushes selection again. Drag this down, and then those Nagel brushes that we've used a few times on this image, I'm going to grab that one to start with, which is one that I know gives a nice cauliflower texture. I've mentioned it before. And I'm just going to paint in some texture over that skill there. And then I'm going to grab another cauliflower brush. And I'm going to just paint some more texture over that skill there, just take it down a little bit, similar there, and then I think I'll just back off a couple of those skulls on the right, I'm just going back to my regular soft egg circular brush, remember we're still using the eraser here, I'm just going to just gently, again one of the benefits of using a graphics tablet is that you can press lightly here, and just back these things off a little bit. If you can't, if you haven't got a graphics tablet, use your opacity slider. Be re be used to dragging your opacity down to sort of 10 or 20 percent, and go over things more than once in order to get the effect you want. But with the with the graphics tablet, you can do it all in just one stroke. Right. That's basically the end of this image. But there's one other thing I'd quickly like to show you. Um, and it's going to just show you a way of looking at the differences between my version of this image and Michelle's version of this image. And if I go to Window Layer Comps, oh, let me erase these two. This was me setting up and getting ready. Right, the Layer Comps window will normally look like this. And what this does is it gives us a way of setting up um, groups of layers that are turned on so that we can say, OK, I've got this one image, and it's got, uh, in our case, in actual fact, we've got all my edits turned on at the moment, and we've got Michelle's edits all turned off. So with all my edits turned on, we can see what that looks like now. If we, in our layer comps, create, press the new button, and we can call this John's edits, and then in our layers palette, turn off all my edits. There's our original image that we started with and then go and turn on all of Michelle's edits. And if I just open that up, you can see everything's turned on. In the Layer Comps palette, press the New, new button again. Michelle's edits. And we've now got two Layer Comps, and I can click on those two. Nothing will happen. As I press the arrows, it will cycle between them. And that allows you to compare two different edits of the same image. And as you can see, there is actually quite a large difference between the way I've done things and the way Michelle's done things. I've basically used the same techniques, but as you go by, you know, we've added a lot of level, a lot of layers to this image. Each layer had slightly different settings, slightly different colors picked. So it's actually turned out to be quite a different image. And I think Michelle's looks great. But um, when you do it, it will look different again for your version. So that's everything for this image. Um, should be a reasonable length show this time rather than the usual half hour. But before I go, I also just wanted to mention that later this week, uh, it's Thursday now, so I guess that means tomorrow, I'll be sitting in for Chris Marquard on Tips from the Top Floor, where we'll have another interesting and useless fact of the day, and I'll be talking about how to get great photos even when the weather and the season aren't on your side. Hey, I'm a Brit, so this is something I know a bit about. So check that out. It should be available by the end of tomorrow. That's Friday. And thank you very much for watching. I will catch you next week.